Hey, what's up, family? It's your favorite uncle cousin, Tyrone Gregory. And today I am going to be talking about something that has really been grinding my gears, something that has me in my feelings. And that is the misleading information surrounding the idea that by having a home-based business, you'll be able to uh, get refunds every single month, be able to write off these extra things on your taxes, or even be able to save hundreds to thousands of dollars on your taxes. See, this came to my attention via this email. And we can see here that one of our family members, Chris, sent me an email because they had saw a video on YouTube telling them that they can get a refund each month. Now, and you can see here, just, just, just being upfront and transparent, you can see my reply. And, and I stated that in my opinion, there is no way to get an actual tax refund every month. I suggested that maybe they were talking about adjusting the W-4, thereby having more taken home on the uh, paycheck, and maybe that extra income each month they're referring to as a tax refund, but even still, it was very misleading. So I told Chris, I said, look, send me the video. Let me see it for myself. Maybe I can help translate and and uh, uh, figure out what exactly is that they're trying to say. And Chris did so sent me the video and I watched it and I immediately became upset because that video was extremely misleading. So I thought to myself, well, I wonder how many other videos are talking about the same thing. So I did my research, saw a few other videos and saw that they was uh, giving the same misleading information. And then I saw it on my own channel. I started to see it in the comment section. You can see it here where people where were telling other people, hey, you need a home-based business. You know, it didn't stop. I saw it again and somebody else, hey, you need a home-based business. And that's when I realized something. The people who are uh, telling other people, who are pumping up this home-based business, they are the network marketing individuals. They are the network marketers who are, using the 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 uh the, the splendor the opulence the majesty of having a home based business with the intent to lure you in to sign up under them and you know what i get it i i completely understand but it's my job as your favorite uncle cousin to make sure that I equip you with the truth to make sure that you have enough knowledge and understanding so that you can make a very informed decision about the steps you're going to make that's going to impact your financial life. So in today's video, I am going to be exposing home-based businesses so you'll learn how to tell the truth between what you see in here and what's real. Now, don't get me wrong. Having a home-based business is a real thing if you have a real business, and I'll explain that to you in a minute. But having a home-based business just for the purposes of trying to write things off on your taxes or even save money, that's not going to fly. That's like having a kid just for the purposes of getting a tax refund. It's not the same thing. Therefore, in this video, I put together a few scenarios so you'll be able to see in with, with, with the numbers, exactly how having a home-based business works, what you're able to write off, what you're able to see. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and kind of go through some of the uh, theories and laws surrounding home-based businesses, beginning with the definition, okay? So according to IRS Publication 587, they define a home as a house, an apartment, a condo, townhome, mobile home, boat, etc., that provides basic living accommodations. Okay. Basic meaning you need to be able to eat, poop, and sleep. All right. So if you understand that anything that, that provides you the opportunity to do these three things 
is considered a home for purposes of the home office deduction. So now the next thing to do is determine if you qualify. This is the starting point. Here is the, the, the very first thing we need to do before looking at anything else is to determine if you even qualify for the home-based business. See, the thing is, when you join these network marketing companies and, and, and similar entities, you don't become a business. You become an independent contractor for that business. And there is a very distinct difference. Yes, independent contractors are afforded the right to write off certain things. They are going to file a Schedule C because they fill out a 1099 miscellaneous, or uh, not that they fill out, but they receive a 1099 miscellaneous. And therefore, um, on paper, it appears as if there's a business. But as we go through this, you'll understand that there's a very distinct difference between an independent contractor and somebody who actually has a business that works from home. All right. So knowing that there's a few things that we're going to need to go through to make sure that you qualify. Well, there's a few tests that you have to pass to make sure that you qualify for a home-based business. And the first one, well, not the first one, but let me kind of go through it. The first one is the exclusive use test. The next one is the regular use test. The next one is it must be your principal place of business. And finally, it must be for your trade or business. All right. So let's go ahead and break them down, starting with the exclusive use. Now, to qualify under the exclusive view test, you must use a specific area of your home only for your trade or business, right? The area used can, can be a room or other separately identifiable space. Uh, the space does not need to be marked off by permanent petitions. You don't have to build anything, but the key here is that it can only be used for business purposes. The minute that you mix any kind of personal activity in there, the exclusive use has then been failed and you will not qualify for the deduction. See, in this room right here, it looks like it's exclusively used for business. There is no hint of personal use there. Well, maybe that, uh, uh, you know, furry rug on the floor, you know, you get comfortable there. But outside of that, this room specifically looks like it is 100% business use, no issues there. But on the other hand, if somebody is claiming that this is their home office, it wouldn't fly, right? It's it's the living room. It's the personal room. This is where people gather. This is where um, all kind of personal activities happen. And, and just working from your laptop, sitting on a couch, does not qualify as exclusive use, again, because of the level of personal use that that offers. And plus, that couch just looks way too comfortable. Like, how can you get work done? Like, I would be asleep right now trying to work from that couch. So, understand that. However, there are exceptions to the exclusive use rule. And the first one is inventory, okay? Uh, meaning that you know, as long as you store things in there, um, you know, if you have inventory that you use to sell and you store it there, whatever section of the home you use for that works, and then daycare. So of course, as a daycare, you really can't have exclusive use because your business relies on individuals being all over the place, okay? So those are the two exceptions, having inventory that you use for your business and then having a daycare. So moving on to the next test, regular use. To qualify under the regular use test, you must use a specific area of your home or business on a regular Basis. Again, I repeat that you must use that specific area of your home for business on a regular basis. Incidental or occasional business use is not a regular test. What do I mean by that? Well, 
that just simply says you can't work from home one day and then the rest of the time your view from work looks like this. Not going to work. That's that's not regular usage. Now, I can say this. There is no specific definition from the IRS that says this is what regular use is. Everything must be considered on a case by case basis, and they are going to consider all of the facts and all of the circumstances. So um, don't think that you have to put in 40 hours a week, 20 hours a week or whatever, because again, there is no specific test, but do keep in mind that every case is different and every fact will be considered. All right, let's move on. Must be your principal place of business. So what this test is saying that you can have multiple places that you work from. However, your home-based business has to be the main place of business, okay? That means that, you know, when it comes to trying to get a storefront, well, that's off the question, all right? Has to be your main place of business. Has to be used for both exclusive and regular use for both administrative and management purposes. Like, for example, if a plumber, now a plumber obviously does not necessarily work from home. They go from place to place and that is their job. They are out in the field. However, if their home office, they use to uh, create invoices, to bill clients, to do the books, to do the accounting, to make all the phone calls, to do the collection activity, they are working in the capacity of administration and management. And because they're doing that for their home, that would count. So uh, uh, make sure to keep that in mind as well. The last test, which is the most important test, in my opinion, states that it must be for your trade or business. Well, this one is obvious, right? I mean, if you're going to deduct the expenses of your home, then it needs to be from your trade or business. But here's the kicker. Again, IRS Publication 587 states that if you use your home for a profit-seeking activity, that is not a trade or business, you cannot take the deduction. What is that? A profit-seeking activity that is not a trade or business. Again, I'm asking, what a profit-seeking activity. Most any time when we're seeking a profit, right, it's for the intent of us having a business. That's what we consider a profit-seeking activity. However, the IRS doesn't view it that way. You could make profit and not have a business. This is the hobby versus business rule in the IRS eyes. You can have a hobby and make money. That's a profit-seeking activity. However, they may not consider it a business. The IRS has what they call nine profit factors that determine whether an individual is in business, um, it was, is making a profit as a business, or are they making a profit as a hobby? So that's why the the trade of business or the under, go back when I was saying. The difference between being an independent contractor for that company versus you actually having your own business, this is what I'm referring to. Because if you are just joining these network marketing companies for the purposes of having a home-based business just so you can write something off, that may not fly. IRS can flag that as a hobby and therefore disallow all of your deductions as a business. So you really want to be careful with that. If you are doing it with the intent to actually be a business, then that's perfect. That's fine. That's the way to do it. But if you're doing it just because they lured you in with the, the whole grandeur of, yes, you can do these amazing things and write all this stuff off, you may run into a problem. Again, keep these things in mind. All right. So let's go ahead and move on talking about the deduction limits. Let's assume that you meet all of the qualifications and you are ready to start deducting. 
of course you're not going to deduct or you're not going to get the opportunity to write off everything. All right. You know, when I was watching these videos, man, I would hear people say some of the craziest things like imagine having the government pay for 50 percent of your traveling costs. Imagine having the government pay for up to 80 percent of your phone bill. Man, let me tell you something. The government ain't going to pay for nothing. Think about that. The government will simply say, like, you know what? We will allow you not to pay tax on that. Or in some instances, they'll be saying we we may allow you to uh, reduce the amount that you paid for that from other tax so you don't have to pay tax on it. But think about it. The government isn't paying for anything. You are still going to pay for it. You are still coming out of pocket paying for it in hopes that the government may uh, not allow you to pay tax on it. That's the only thing. Again, it was, it was just so misleading to hear that information. So please do not start a home based business with the intent of saying, yeah, I'm going to start this home based business. And because I do now, I get to go out and spend money on everything because the government is going to reimburse me for it. They're not. They're simply going to say, okay, you don't have to pay tax on that money, but in the end, it's still money you spent. It is still money gone. Uh, I, I may even venture to say it's money wasted because if you spent it with the intent or the idea or the expectation that the government was going to pay you back, no. Okay, so knowing that, now let's talk about the actual methods you can use to determine how much you'll be able to deduct. And the first one is the actual method. And then there is the simplified method. All right. So let's talk about the actual method. The first thing to know when it comes to using the actual method is that there are three types. Okay. There is the direct expenses, meaning that these are expenses that happen directly in the part of the home that is used for business. Direct expenses are hundred percent deductible up to the deduction limit, something we'll talk about a little later here. And an example of a direct expense is say if you painted the home office itself, not the whole house, but just the business portion of the uh, the home, that the one that you use as an office, that will be considered a direct expense. The next one is an indirect expense. These are the expenses that cover the whole house, like insurance, any general repairs and utilities. These are deductible based on the business use percent of the home. Um, an example would be getting the whole house painted, right? That is indirect, even though it covers the uh, business portion of the home and the entire home itself. So that one is limited. Other indirect expenses are your mortgage interest and your property taxes. These are also limited to the business use percent of the home, but they can be deducted regardless of the limits. Again, something that I'm going to explain later. The next one is unrelated expenses. And these expenses are, well, unrelated <laughs> to the business use of the home. These are not deductible at all. An example of an unrelated expense would be the, the lawn care um, or remodeling of the kitchen. That has nothing to do with the business um, office in the home. So therefore, it is an unrelated, non-deductible expense. All right. Now, there are two rules of these limitations when using actual expenses. One, if you make a profit, you can deduct all the business expenses related to your home, up to the limitations, of course. Second, if you have a loss, your deductions are limited even more. And again, you'll see all of this is what I'm talking about. You see this when we get to the scenarios. All right. So the next one, the simplified method, let's kind of talk about that one. As the name implies, 
It's a extremely simplified way to figure out the deduction. This method does not require all of the calculations for the limitations. Um, it does not require all of the substantiation of the actual expenses. All you do to determine your deduction is multiply the uh, area used for the home by $5, up to 300 square feet. So in the end, the maximum deduction anyone can take using the simplified method is only 1500 bucks. Because if 300 square feet is the max times $5 per square foot, $1,500, that is the max you can take. However, there is one rule with this one that you uh, must make note of, and that is you must make a profit, okay? Using the simplified method, you must make a profit, and keep that in mind. Profit, keyword, profit. Put that in the back of your mind. Profit, and you'll see why I keep mentioning the word profit in a minute. But Using the simplified method, you must make a profit. If you take a loss or even if you break even, you cannot use the simplified method. All right, it is show me time. See, this is the thing that I want you to do. This is the, the mindset that I want you to have. Every time you hear somebody tell you something that sounds too good to be true, Tell them this, say, run me those numbers, all right? That's exactly what I want you to do. Now, if you don't want to be as aggressive as I just did it, you can politely say, you know, can you please show me the numbers? Yes, but I'm upset. So I'm telling you, if somebody come at you, be like, man, you can do this, you can do that, you can do this, all you got to do this, tell them, run me those numbers. Simple as that. And that's exactly what I'm getting ready to do for you right here in these scenarios, all right? In each of these scenarios, you're going to see where somebody makes a profit, where someone breaks even, and where someone takes a loss. So you can see how having a home-based business affects each of those scenarios. All right, before we begin, please note that these scenarios are only focusing on the aspect of a home-based business. Everybody's situation is different. Everybody's going to have different outcome, but I am only focusing on the home-based businesses and the deductions and the deductions that are allowed according to the IRS. Now, this is short. Home-based business in itself is a very involved concept, so much so that I had to give it its own separate video inside the Self-Employed Tax Academy. So what you're getting here is just a summary, it's just a very generalized summary so you can see how it affects individuals. Here we have scenario number one. This individual is single, no kids, they own their home, they have wages of $60,000. Now, I put wages here because 90% of the time with these network marketers or people who are talking about home-based businesses, they're going after people who have W-2 jobs because they're the ones who are trying their best to reduce their taxes and try to figure out a way um, to get more money. So a lot of times it's those who have W-2 wages. So in these scenarios, these are people who are W-2 earners and they're working on being self-employed. So um, this individual, again, owns their home, wages of $60,000, and here are their expenses. They have mortgage interest of $12,000, property tax of $3,000, their utilities, which includes the internet, comes up to about $6,000. Um, their vehicle runs them about maybe $3,000 a year. That, that averages about to maybe $250 a month. And they have a cell phone bill, which runs them $1,800 a year for the cell phone. And their home is valued at $200,000. Now, for depreciation purposes, that is the actual basis. I, so, um, and that's minus the land value, all right? So let's take a look at these and see exactly how that works. All right, so I'm gonna go through these scenarios real quick here, um, just cause I wanna be able to get directly to the numbers. Now, what we have here is the before we do 
the home office. Before we add the home office, this is what this individual looks like. Again, they're uh, single, as we can see here, wages of $60,000. And because they own their home, they get to itemize. This is what the itemization comes up to. Note this number here on line 40 to 15,826. That is what they get to itemize before the home office deduction. Um, their tax liability at this point is, where is it at here? Down on line 63, their total tax, 5,770. They made 60,000. They had $6,000 withheld from their wages. So they ended up with a refund of $230. That is the, the uh, foundation. Now, everything that we do here on out is going to reflect the home office. Looking at the $10,000 scenario here, I say they joined a network marketing or they joined a, uh, started a home-based business and they made $10,000 here on their schedule C, right? So now, let me face this again here. So let's scroll through here again, still same income, 60,000 after writing everything off on their schedule C, they had a profit of $808. So increased their income by $808. There's the one half of the self-employment tax. And let's look at the bottom line. Look at the line 40 here. The itemized deductions went down. Why is that? Because there is no such thing as double dipping. You can't write it off as a business and then write it off again as an itemized deduction. So whatever you write off over there gets prorated and the remaining part gets carried over to your personal expenses on the schedule A. So keep that in mind. So at the end of the day, having a home-based business with a profit so that they can deduct everything, Actually, let's see, they went from getting a refund of 230 to owing $822. So let's go ahead. I'm scrolling through everything um, so we can look at the actual home-based business. And here it is. This is the form, the 8829. That is what's used to figure how much of your expenses you get to deduct. Now, I'll use, and this is going to be for all the scenarios, 20%. And that is being extremely generous, giving you 20% in these scenarios as an amount of the um, area used for your home. Because on average, is between 9 and 13%. But I wanted to be generous just for purposes of these examples. I went to 20%, just so we'll see. So here we are, 20% of everything. Here's our $12,000 mortgage interest. Here's our $3,000 uh, property taxes, $15,000 total. But we only get 20% of that. So that became $3,000 here on line 13. So when we subtracted the $3,000 from line 8, which is our gross income from the business. Now, let me pause right here and explain something. When we talk about the gross income from the business, notice we made, we brought in, in this scenario, $10,000. But here, line eight, it says, enter the amount from schedule C, line 29. And if we go back up to schedule C and look at line 29, that is the $10,000 minus our normal expenses. And for each one of these scenarios, I left the expenses the same. Uh, just to say, you know, we have some money in advertising. Uh, we get to write off some, some mileage for our vehicles. And then we have some supplies. All right. Then there's, uh, 80%. Again, being very generous. The 1440 we'll see here is our cell phone bill up to 80% of that 1800. And this is going to be the same for all the scenarios. I'm being extremely generous because I believe that it's less than that. But on a high end, we'll see. And I gave business mileage of 800 miles. I mean, think about it. If you have a home-based business, where are you driving to? But I just said, you know what? For the sake of this, let's go ahead and say they drove about 800 miles for the year. All right. So. Now we know that, let's go back to our business use of home. 
we here have the 6,032, which is the 10,000 minus all the expenses. That is the starting point for the business use of home. So when we subtracted the 3,000 from the 632, uh, we had a balance of 3,032 left. And then we go down here. We have some repairs and maintenance to the house. We put it there. Notice that there's column A for direct expenses, column B for indirect expenses. You have to make the choice to be honest there. Then our utilities came up to 6,000. So we had 6,200. Again, 20% of that is 1240. So now what we did was add the um, 1240 here plus our depreciation. And let me scroll down here because we did have depreciation for this. Home value was 250000 minus the value of the land. Like I said, $200,000 is what we're depreciating. Uh, the business use, 20%, 40000 First year gives us a $984 depreciation, which is what we see here. And when we add these numbers up, this line 35 is what we are allowed to deduct as our home-based business. So we subtracted that from the 632, which is how we ended up with the 808. And you'll see it right here on line 30 of the Schedule C. But let's go back up to the very top. Adding a home-based business for this individual, again, single, no kids, W-2 wages of $60,000, they did good. They ended up with a refund originally, of $230, added a home-based business, actually made some money, and then end up owing. Yeah, yeah, that's why you want to say, run me those numbers. Yes, you got to deduct everything, but you know what? In the end, there was no tax savings. You actually ended up owing money. So let's move on. Let's say, same scenario, 60000 this person broke even. Let's go to the Schedule C here. Going, scrolling, scrolling. Here, they only made $39.68. That's how much. Instead of $10,000, they made $3,968, which pretty much broke them even. See line 29, tentative property loss, zero. There was no loss. There was no gain. Broke even. But now we see the... um Line 30, the amount that we get to do from our business use of home is only 3000 well, Where does that come from? Well, let's go take a look. So again, same everything. I didn't change the numbers. The only thing I changed was the amount of profit that they took in. See the difference? We still got the 12000 for the mortgage interest, the $3,000, uh, the 15000 total. The 20% of that is 3000 but because we had no gross income, we had nothing to put here on line eight, all these other expenses, the repairs, the utilities, the depreciation, none of that got calculated. But remember I said in the very beginning part of this video that you'd be allowed to deduct the mortgage interest up to the limit regardless of all the other limitations. This is what I was referring to you still get to deduct 20% of these, I like to call them category one expenses, regardless of anything else. So that's why they still, let me scroll back up here, they still get to deduct the $3,000, okay? Now, what did that do for them as far as taxes go? Well, here, they no longer owe, but instead of getting a refund of $230, they're getting a refund of 217. So they still took a loss. It still didn't benefit them. You know, that's why I say, yeah, home-based businesses may not be the best for everybody in every situation. All right. So understand that. Now let's look at a situation where they took an actual loss. Here we see that there is, um, they get to subtract $5,968, which reduces their income. Let's scroll down. They still got the same amount of itemized deductions. Oh, but look at here. In this scenario, they actually come out on top. There's a refund of $882, like it was a, a full swing from a profit to a loss. So let's scroll down and see how did that play out. 
So here it is. They had the home based business. They made only a thousand dollars extra for that year. Took a loss of uh, twenty nine sixty eight. Plus, they still got to deduct the three thousand dollars for their home based business. So those two added up to the to the loss of fifty nine sixty eight that we see here. And again, because nothing's changed, we have nothing to enter here on line eight. Pretty much a negative number. It still results as a zero for them. The only thing you'll be able to deduct is 20% of the mortgage interest and real estate taxes. All those other things they're talking about, the repairs, the utilities, the rent, none of that gets deducted. Only the property, uh, the mortgage interest and the property tax. So that's why I say it's misleading. The only thing they got to deduct here is the $3,000. Now, my concern with this type of situation, uh, even though, yes, they benefited, they won, they came out on top, they got a refund of $882, but to do that, they had to take a loss. And my question to you is, how many losses are you going to take and be ready for when the IRS says, okay, is this a hobby or is this a business because there's too many losses being reported? You have to keep that in mind, all right? So let's go ahead on to scenario number two. So here we are, scenario number two. Same, single, no kids, own home, but now they have a higher wage because I've heard that this benefits higher earning uh, individuals. So here I raise the wages up to $100,000. And guess what? If they have $100,000, maybe they have a bigger house. So their mortgage interest went up to $18,000. Property taxes went up to $5,000. Utilities went up to 8,000. The vehicle went up to 4,200. And because the cell phone plans normally stay the same no matter what income range you're in, we left the cell phone at $1,800. Their home value, because again, they may have a bigger home, is valued at $300,000. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like here. All right, so here we have scenario two again, speeding through it because the information is the same. They have somebody single, no dependents, $100,000 of income. Here is their total itemized deductions originally. Again, this is before we add the home business. We can see 24073 Scrolling down, uh, out of $100,000, they had $15,000 withheld, which resulted in a refund of $1,292. And again, this is before we had the home-based business. So let's go ahead and look at what it looks like. Here we have uh, $100,000. We added $10,000 to the business income. Let's see what that looks like. Wow. So it pretty much brought their refund down, way down, almost like $1,000 right there. Um, 242 bucks. I mean, you know, well, I mean, I guess we can be happy that they're still getting a refund, but what happened? So $10,000 profit on a home-based business. Uh, it looks like they pretty much zeroed out because they wrote off $3,968, which brought their tentative profit down to 632. And it looks like we were able to get a home office deduction of the same 632, so they broke even. So let's go down here to the 8829 and look at what happened. Again, keeping it generous at 20%. Here is their total uh, mortgage interest, property taxes, 23,000 total, 20% 20 of that, 4,600, which we uh, get to subtract from the 632 which leaves us 1,432 of the other expenses, right? That's exactly how that works there. So of the 8,200, 20% of that is 1,640. So of the 1,640, we got to subtract the 1,432, and that's what gave us the 632 or the $6,032. And that's why we were able to break even again, resulting in a refund of $142 which was way less than the original. So in this scenario, having a home-based business did not do them any good. Now let's go to a break-even scenario. Well, looky there, another loss. So we were able to reduce our wages by 4,600. Um, 
bringing our total taxable income to 995400 there. So let's scroll down. Notice again, our uh, original itemized deductions went down, no double dipping. So what is the end result? Here we have a refund. Now the refund was just a little bit less than the original refund, but hey, they still refunded. But again, it wasn't it's, it's less than the original refund. So even if they start a home-based business and they break even, it's not beneficial. Let me scroll on down to the schedule C and we can see here it is, just so you'll see it. There's how much they brought in, the $39.68. $39.68 worth of expenses, broke even, but they still got to deduct an amount for their uh, home office. And that's because they still get to deduct, regardless of anything else, 20% or whatever your percentage is of your mortgage interest and real estate taxes. Okay. So that's why we get the loss of the $4,600. But Back to my original question, how many losses are you willing to take before the IRS says, hey, is this a hobby or business? Let's look at one last scenario when there is a loss involved. What happens here? Well, the loss gets bigger. So instead of a $4,000 loss, they have a $7,000 loss. And what is the end result? Well, of course, the refund is a lot higher. In this scenario, uh, in this scenario, I can't even talk right now. In this scenario, two thousand dollars versus fourteen hundred or even twelve hundred. Of course, that's a win. But look how much of a loss you have to report to get that. And same scenario when we go down to the eighty um, eighty eight twenty nine. The same thing. You have the loss, the twenty nine sixty eight plus the forty six hundred. You're allowed to deduct. That's what gives us our amount here. These two amounts combined together equals this loss and you're good to go. So we can see the trend starting to form here. If you make a profit on a home-based business, then you lose. If you break even on a home-based business, then you still lose. But if you take a loss on a home-based business, then you are going to win. But what is the risk of taking a loss is what you have to measure. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. Scenario number three. In this scenario, I'm having somebody who was married with no children. They own a home combined wages of $140,000. Okay. Their mortgage interest is $20,000. Their property taxes went up to $6,000. Their utilities at $8. Thousand dollars. The vehicle combined between the two is about six thousand dollars a year. And again, the cell phone I'm going to keep at eighteen hundred dollars, uh, just because maybe only one person actually decided to do the home based business. And then their home value is at five hundred thousand dollars. So let's look and see how a home based business is going to affect somebody in this scenario. All right, so here we have the married couple. As you can see, we have a married filing joint filing status. We have their uh, wages of 140000 combined. Nothing else there. Here's their itemized deductions. They're writing off $27,353. Tax liability comes up to $17,614. Uh, they had $20,000 withheld combined between their wages. So they're getting a refund of twenty three. dollars 86. This is the starting point. Going through the same three scenario, let's look at the one. If they or one person started a home-based business, had a profit of $10,000, look at that. Nothing changed. So just looking at that, another break-even situation. Let's scroll all the way down to our Schedule C so you can see that the numbers are there. There it is. $10,000. Same expenses, advertising, car, uh, supplies, and 80% and of their cell phone bill being written off. Very generous amounts here. But it's the same scenario here. They had a tentative profit or loss of 6032 and the home-based business gave them a deduction of 6032 So it pretty much remained the same. Now let's go here and look at everything. What happened? Still, given a generous amount of 20%, 20% of their mortgage interest and real estate taxes came up to 5200 
leaving only $832 for the other expenses to get deducted. So when you put the, the, um, the 5,200 plus the 83, $832, that gives us our 632. They pretty much broke even. Now, the good thing is anything that doesn't get deducted gets carried over. So you can carry over an amount till next year. And again, it, it, it's the same situation. Even if you carry it over, if there's nothing to um, run it against or nothing to deduct it from, you end up in the same situation. All right. So in that situation, 100000 refund got reduced. Remember, they originally they had a refund of over $2,000. Now their refund went down to $1,086. To $1,086. Let's look at it for the break even scenario. Break even scenario, there's a loss, $5,200. It seems to be the same no matter how much the income results in. Let me go down to the Schedule C. There's the amounts breaking even. They got to deduct $5,200. Where's that $5,200 coming from? Let's look at the business use of home. I know this is starting to sound redundant because I'm feeling redundant, but I want to show you these numbers. They got to deduct 20% of their mortgage interest and property taxes only. All of the other expenses, because there was nothing left, there was nothing left to deduct. So that's all they received. Simple. All right. And let's look at when they take a loss. Same scenario. Loss on the front end gets bigger, which obviously in this case, they win. The refund is higher, right? Instead of $2,000 refund, they're getting a $3,104 refund. Looking at the Schedule C, they only made $1,000 from the business, but after all the expenses, they ended up with a loss. They still got to deduct the $5,200 from their mortgage interest and property taxes, which add that to the loss there, gives us the $8,168. Looking at the... Uh, the 8829 is the same as it was before, only 5200 So we can still see no matter how much that they're making, the only way to really profit from a home-based business is to make a loss or to take a loss, which is extremely risky in this type of scenario, okay? So one more scenario, let's go ahead and make sure we look at it. Scenario number four, the last scenario I'm going to give you, and I promise we are done, but this one here had to be important because a lot of people may fall into this scenario. Uh, here's somebody was single, no kids. Now, here's the difference. This individual rents their home. They are not homeowners. They pay rent, okay? Rent their home, still make a really uh, decent salary, wages of $60,000, Here's their expenses. The rent is about eighteen thousand uh, for the year, which averages about to maybe fifteen hundred per month. So eighteen thousand a year in rent. The utilities two thousand four hundred, including the internet. Vehicle averages about maybe three thousand dollar a year, or or two hundred and fifty bucks a month. Uh, again, single use cell phone eighteen hundred bucks, and that's it. For a renter, they don't have all of the uh, property taxes and, and 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 things like that. So those are all of their expenses. There is no home value, nothing to depreciate. So this is the scenario for renters. All right, and this goes if you're married, single, or whatever. The reason I didn't, I guess I'll, I'll pause right here. And the reason I didn't put kids in any of these scenarios is because kids within themselves offers a different set of credits. I wanted to focus solely on the benefit that's out there or the rumors that states having a home-based business is going to afford you all of these immaculate things, which as we can see, the only way that's true is if you're taking a loss. So let's go ahead and look at the um, expense for somebody who rents. All right, so here we are. We have the renter again, single, no dependents, income of $60,000, uh, notice there is no itemized deduction, nothing to write out because they're not homeowners. Everything is rent there. Tax liability, $8,145. They had $8,000 withheld from their W-2 because they're single, no dependents. 
So their withholding was a lot higher and they ended up only owing 145 bucks. This is our baseline. This is what we're starting. Same scenarios. Let's say they started a home-based business and they profited $10,000. What is happening here? Profit, they're adding income to their wage. It's not taken from it. They're adding income because in order, remember the rules for uh, business use of home, you have to make a profit in order to really see any kind of deduction. So when you make a profit, you're adding to your income. I should have said that up front, but it, 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 it really just, just reminded myself here. Um, so there is no benefit there. So let's scroll down, see what happens again. Their standard deductions stay the same because they're not itemizing. So we don't have to worry about it there. Tax liability came up to 8,853. So with a home-based business in an effort to try to reap the benefits of it, their balance due went up from like 140 some bucks to $853. That's not a win, in my opinion. That is a loss. Let's look at the profit and loss. Let's look at the business. There it is, the $10,000 um, profit right here. All the expenses I kept the same. And here's our total tentative profit and loss, $6,032. But we got to deduct $4,122 from the business use of home. So let's go there and look at it. Self-employment tax. All right, here we are. 20% of everything. I'm still giving them 20%, even though they rent. I'm still giving them 20% deduction. Note, we have our 632, which is our starting point. There is no mortgage interest. There is no property tax or anything like that. So we still get the full 632 as an amount to uh, compare our, our uh, deductions to. So when we scroll down, Here's the rent that we paid. We had some repair maintenance to the uh, 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 general apartment. If it was made directly to that room itself, we would put it over here on column A. But because it was just some general repairs, we put it here. Maybe it was a plumbing or something like that. And then here's our utilities. Comes up to 20,600. 20% of that is 4120. That's what we get to deduct. The 4120, the full amount here, because we have enough gross income to actually cover that. So that's why we see it here as a deduction on the Schedule C. But again, looking at the end result, we had to make a profit to be able to write that off and making a profit added to the income, which then increased our Mount due. So I really don't see how that's a win there. Now let's look at the break even scenario. You know what the break even scenario is? There's nothing there. Now in the other ones, we took a loss. Remember when you had a home and you broke even, you still got to write off something. Why is it not showing up here? There is no loss taken when you are renting. Well, let's take a look and see. We still have the uh, standard deduction that's there. And now our um, nothing's changed for us. Our, our, our balance due is still the same. Taxes are still the same. Federal income tax withholding is the same. And the balance due has now went back to the original. Well, what happened? So here we are. We started the home-based business, made some profit, the $39.68. But guess what? We broke even. There was zero loss, uh, zero gain. But what's interesting is we have zero Expensive use of home, nothing. Let's take a look at the 8829 and see what happened. Still got the same 20%, right? Still got the same deduction, the 4120. But guess what? This is the problem. Why well, I say, I want you to be honest, tell people, say, man, show me the numbers. Is it really going to make sense? The situation is, remember these, what I call below the line expenses because they're below line 15. If there is nothing on line eight, then these expenses don't get to get deducted. There is nothing to deduct. So if you are a renter and you're breaking even, the rent on line 18 falls below line 15. Therefore, anything below line 15 is subject to a limitation. 
if there is nothing to subtract it against, you don't get it. So in this situation where if you were a homeowner, yes, you probably would be able to take a loss. But as a renter, you get nothing. You get absolutely nothing if you break even. Or let's take a look at what happens if we take a loss. Well, look, there is a loss on there, but that loss is coming from the Schedule C itself. That loss is coming from the other expenses, not having to do with the home-based business. That's coming from the advertising, the mileage, the supplies, your, your cell phone. That is coming from not the home-based business. When it comes to your home-based business, you get nothing as a renter if you don't make a profit. So in summary, as you can see, having a home-based business is not all of this uh, spectacular is or is not as spectacular as they would make it seem. So again, we gonna make this uh, make this a hashtag family. We are going to say hashtag run me those numbers. Anytime somebody's trying to tell you something, simply reply respectfully. Show me the numbers. Make sure that it makes sense because we can see in four scenarios running three different ways. The only time having a home-based business was beneficial is when somebody took a loss. And again, that is real risky. Losses are legal. Losses happen. But so many losses, the IRS is going to sit up here and ask you, is this a business or is this a hobby? And remember, as a worker of these network marketing companies, you're not a business. You are an independent contractor for that business. And there is a very distinctive difference. But look, I know we went through a lot of scenarios and your mind is probably blown right now. But hey, I'm your uncle cousin. I love you. I did something and, and I'm, I'm really excited here. I'm really going to show you. I created specifically just for you. First time doing it. I made you a tool. Because I want you to be able to run the numbers for yourself, even if they don't want to run the numbers for you. I want you to be able to run the numbers for yourself, plug in the numbers, plug in everything and see just how much you'll be able to deduct. So you can kind of reference these scenarios and be like, is it going to make sense or is it not? Because another thing that you have to also keep in mind is not only did it cost these individuals, like some had higher refunds. I'm sorry, some had higher balance dues or lower refunds, but having a home-based business also incurs additional costs. The cost of your tax preparation is going to increase because now you're doing a small business return. There is the cost of actually joining these marketing informations, right? There, there, there is just additional cost that you are going to take on. So, make sure that you are aware of all of those things, add them in and see is this right for me? Is doing this going to benefit me 100%? But let me show you this tool right, that, that I've uh, created for you right here. All right, so here it is, family, the tool I created for you, the Home Office Deduction Estimator. Uh, it's a very simple tool. Um, I did it here in Excel. For those of you who know me, you know I'm an old school fan. I love pen and paper. I love Microsoft Excel. But just to kind of see, this is what you can do. And this is absolutely free to you. I'll make sure I put the link down at the bottom so you can get your copy of it. All you have to do is enter here the estimated amount of business use. And let me just, um, for purposes of showing you how it works, I put 20% because that is the examples that we were using in the video there. So here you put the gross estimated income. Now this technically is not the, the profit because remember, it wasn't the profit that we was putting in there. It was the amount left over after the expenses. So it's the, uh, and I'll probably make sure I change that. So when you get it, you'll see something different. It is say your net income. You take your profit minus your expenses, start there. And I do believe in the scenario for that we were just using, the actual bottom line came out to be, what was it? Uh, 6,032. So we'll put that there, 6,032. The people, let me just pick a number. Like I said, I do believe they had $12,000 mortgage interest. Um, 
They had three thousand dollars property tax. Yeah, I remember that fifteen thousand. And you can see it does everything for you. It, it gives you the twenty percent deduction that's um, available off top when 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 you have mortgage interest and property tax. And it tells you what's available for the other expenses. And so then we enter here, either direct or indirect. And I think the repairs and maintenance in that scenario was two hundred dollars. Uh, they had utilities, I don't know, 5,000. Let's just add that there. Um, so it came up to 1,040. And when we compare the two, you know, we have total possible deduction, 4,040. So at that point, you'll have an idea of what it is you can deduct. Just play, just, you know, just by plugging in some numbers. Let's say, for example, we want to say in a law situation, how much would we deduct in every law situation that was a thousand dollars? Look at that. It tells you right there. The max you can deduct three thousand dollars. Right? So let's change this. Let's let's go back. Let's put the 6032 here. But let's change the fact that now we're dealing with a renter. So we'll remove all of the um mortgage interest and property tax there. We'll strictly deal with we'll put rent. I think the rent was eighteen thousand. So bam, it tells you right there. That's how much you can deduct, right? As a renter, that's how much you'll be able to write off with all of these expenses. But let's say, for example, we had, uh, we broke even. We had zero. Look at that. It tells you, you won't get to write off nothing. Even if you took a loss, well, I guess you, in this one, you wouldn't be able to go to zero. You wouldn't be able to deduct nothing, but that's just something I created for you. I want you to have it just so you can play around with the numbers, just so you can see if it is going to make sense for you to do. And note here in the box, I did not add the casualty loss and depreciation are not included in this estimate. Why? Because casualty losses uh, are used by less than 1% of the population and depreciation was not included due to, the, due to the amount of information that would be needed. However, if you want to guess the depreciation, the average amount of depreciation is, is around $1,000. So you can actually include that here in other, in that box right there. So you can still get kind of an, an accurate. Again, this is an estimator. It's a free tool. It's yours to use. All you have to do is just click on the link down at the bottom. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll be taken to the site where you enter in your information and it'll be delivered to you immediately. This is in Excel. It will be delivered in Excel. However, it is also available in Google Docs if you don't have Excel. Everybody should have Google Docs. You have a Google account. You have Google Docs. So it's available for you. It's there. I thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Man, your uncle cousin loves you. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you are, if you haven't already subscribed. Hit that subscribe button as you'll be getting more things like this delivered to you. As always, if you need me, you know how to find me. Shoot me an email. Um, look me up on social media and all the social media outlets here. And I will see you in the next one.